It's an interesting uh, uh, thing for me how I got into um, organic no-till. I've been doing what I label a sustainable no-till for, uh, for 26 years, but about five or six years ago I started to become very much aware that uh, many people who attended my talks were intrigued because of the weed control I was able to get with these high residue systems. If you get enough tonnage, two to three tons is kind of a minimum, you can suppress weeds. That doesn't mean that there won't be any weeds, but there is a concept that's very important and that is this minimum weed free period which is the time that the field needs to be relatively clean before canopy closure and with these heavy residues we can achieve that especially with vegetable crops that have a quick canopy closure like broccoli. A major reason why high residue systems uh, are being used is it tends to amplify or enhance all the benefits of low residue systems. Uh, key examples would be weed suppression and the buildup and improvement of soil quality. Proper selection, establishment, and production of high residue cover crops is the key to organic no-till. An ideal cover crop is moderately priced, easily established. You must be able to establish it without difficulty. Highly productive, which means a lot of biomass or residues produced. Easily killed mechanically, which of course is required by organics. And lastly, it's not a lillopathic to the cash crop. It's fine to be a lillopathic to the weeds, but it can't be a lillopathic or interfere with, with crop growth. Cover crops can be and normally are crop specific. One is cereal rye biculture with hairy vetch. This can be used successfully for fruit crops like uh, tomatoes, peppers, and pumpkins it is widely used. Another combination is foxtail millet and soybean, or foxtail millet and cowpea. Other people have used different millets. Uh, I tend to use foxtail, but other people prefer Japanese and some even pearl. Uh, the millets work really good. They produce a huge amount of biomass in a short time, and they work really well as summer cover crops uh, in preparation to receive fall broccoli or cabbage. Another thing that I found is crimson clover and barley. You can get huge amounts of biomass and nitrogen from the crimson clover and it will come in earlier, like three weeks or more earlier than, uh, than hairy vetch. And so you can use this for your early summer crops and we've been very successful with